supply is impacted by by a number of things. Um, first, first of all, you've got you know, um, chip shortages. You've got component shortages. Uh, that's obviously interfering with manufacturing. Uh, you've got freight issues. Um, you know, and so you've got all these supply side issues. Then then more localized. Yeah, you know, we've had what two floods in Queensland, which every time we have a flood, it takes out you know thousands of cars, bushfires, and other factors that that have impacted the supply side too. So, yeah, you know, supply has, has been a challenge, and um, it's been a challenge for some time, and it will probably continue to be a challenge for a little while to come. So, how long do you see it being an issue on the supply uh, side, and what are the sort of wait times uh, for new cars? Yeah, no. Look, it's it's manufacturer to manufacturer. Uh, some some manufacturers are having less uh, supply side shortage shortages, and so it's it's relatively easier to get a car. Um, it really does just depend on on the manufacturer. It depends on the model of vehicle that you're looking for as well. Um, but yeah, the, the wait times could be anywhere from a couple of weeks to six six or 12 months, just depending mm. on the car that you're looking for. Mm. So that's the new car sale market. What about the second-hand uh, car sales market? We know that prices there are also skyrocketing, hearing stories about people who are selling their cars for more than what they actually paid for them years beforehand. Why is that going on and how long is that likely to continue? Yeah, look, it's going on for a number of reasons. So the first one is, you know, on the demand side, you know, people have people have gone through COVID, they've, they've avoided public transportation and they've got themselves back into cars, you know, with lockdown borders and so on, you know, people haven't been able to travel uh, and so they've got themselves into cars. Uh, and then with the supply side issues that we've mentioned, you know, that's, that's just put pressure on, on used cars and any car I buy uh, and put on my driveway is a new car to me. So, you know, whether it's a used car or a new car, it's still a new car to me. So, I mean, that's, that, that's been the key driver for, for driving used car prices up to where we see them today. So how have these factors all played into the business? We know that tech not, stocks have been smashed over the last year, but car sales share price is only down 8% year to date, which is relatively uh, better than a lot, of, uh, a lot of other tech stocks. How have you mitigated these losses? Yeah, look, I mean, our, our, our business um, model works off you know, demand and, and you know, the demand for cars has been been strong as prices have gone up. Uh, what that's done is, and you mentioned it before, uh, consumers recognise the price they can achieve for their car. So there's been a lot of consumers selling their cars as well, and you know car sales monetise on both the buy and the sell side. So activity in the market, the more the activity in the market, the better it is is for us as an organisation. Um, so there's there's that, but then also where where as a business, you know, nearly half our business is offshore now in high growth markets, uh, whether that be in Latin America, North America, or in Asia. So, you know, those markets have all performed differently, but but overall we've seen really strong growth there too. Is the sector back to pre-COVID inventory levels as well as advertising levels? No, I mean, inventory, it, it's country to country. So in Australia, no, we're, we're not back to pre-COVID levels. We're still a fair way off and you know, for all the reasons that we talked about. But other markets in, in Latin America, uh, like Brazil, it's getting closer to, to pre-pandemic levels. Um, uh, Asia, uh, Korea, getting closer. Um, but uh, every market's different at the moment. Cameron McIntyre, thank you. Thank you.